Hello class, this is a video tutorial on continuous probability. Discrete probability worked with events that had distinct outcomes. So for example, on the dice roll, you could only get one, two, three, four, five, or six as your results. For um, throwing heads from four coins, you could get zero heads in, four, in the four throws, one head in the four throws, two, three, or all four coins to be as heads. We had a test score out of 10, considering that it's only whole number marks, there's no half marks, you could get the marks 0 to 10. And even with probability distributions, in these examples, we saw that only the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 could occur in this particular discrete probability distribution. But as the size of the sample space increases, like for example, if let's say we throw a coin 1,000 times, how many heads could we get? We could get zero heads, one heads, two heads, three heads, all the way up to 1,000 heads from the 1,000 coin throws. Or also, if the variable being measured has infinite possibilities, we must use the, the concepts from continuous probability. I'll show you an example of where this might be um, the case. So let's say a particle will randomly appear inside a circle of radius 10 centimeters. Okay, so let's say here, so that entire circle, sorry, should be 10 meters, 10 meters. Okay, so a dot's going to appear somewhere in this circle. Once it appears, what is the probability it is exactly 2 meters from the, uh, from the center? So by that we mean, what's the probability it's going to hit exactly on that edge? Like that. Well, previously we saw that the probabilities of an area is equal to the relative area it covers. So how much area is exactly 2 meters from the center? So how much area does whoops that one? How much area does that circle actually cover? If you calculated it to be area equals pi times two squared, this is actually incorrect since there are points inside that circle that are less than two meters from the center. Because remember, we asked what's the probability it is exactly two meters from the center? So, well, the actual answer to this is zero. Since the actual line itself right, has zero width. So the main point I'd like for you to get now is that the probability of discrete values in continuous variables is zero. So the probability of getting a particular number is actually zero. Continuous, continuous probabilities instead calculate the probabilities of a range of values. So either we take all the numbers less than a particular target, so the probability at most a, we can calculate the probability between two values, so x is less than b but greater than a, or from a to the maximum a number allowed, so from at least a. So the equivalence of this for this example that we have, it's what's the probability it appears inside mm -hmm. a two meter circle. For this one, What's the probability it appears between two or three meters? For this one here, it's the probability um, is, um, the equivalent is it appears outside a three meter circle. So let, let's change our mentality here. When the particle appears, what is the probability its distance from the center is at most two meters? Well, for this, we first need the total probability to the total is equal to pi times 10 squared, which is 100 pi. 
uh, meter squared. And the target we're looking at is the two meter circle. So we're drawing two meter circle like so. Where's the middle? Like so. So this is going to be two meter circle going to be pi times two square, which is four pi meter square. Now the probability that it appears x is less than or equal to two is the total area, which is four pi of the circle divided by the full area of its allowed field. This is actually going to be 0 0.25. So there's a 25% chance that it appears somewhere inside that circle. At least three meters. That's the same as the probability of x is greater than or equal to three meters. Well, that's going to be pi times three squared equals nine pi. The probability of this is going to be nine pi over uh, 100 pi. Oh, sorry, I just, see, I just saw the mistake that I had. It should be 0 0.04, not 25%. Uh, sorry, let's finish this off. It's going to be 0 0.09, which is a 9% chance that it appears outside of a 3 meter circle. What's the probability that it appears between 2 meters and 3 meters? Well, we need to find out the area that that covers. So here's my 3 meter circle, and here's my 2 meter circle. We're actually looking for this area in between. Well, that's just the area of the bigger circle subtracted by the smaller circle. So the probability of 2 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3, is equal to 9 pi minus 4 pi all over 100 pi. That's 5 pi on 100 pi, which is, these two, those two cancel, 0 0.05. It's a 5% 5 chance. Now, what if it's at most any radius that we want? Well, that's the same as probability of x. At most x meters means it's less than or equal to x. Well, that's going to be pi times x squared, which is just x squared pi over 100 pi. Canceling those two, we get 1 on 100 x squared. So I hope this introduces you the idea that we're actually going to be creating a function that represents the probability of any value of x because in this case the radius doesn't have to be 2 3 or any distinct number we could have if we wanted to 2.001 meter for the radius or 2 9.099 meters so this is one example of where we are going to be using continuous probabilities where any value of r, the radius, could be used. We're actually going to be creating functions to represent uh, probabilities. So I hope that gave you an insight into continuous probabilities and how we might be using them. Hope to see you in the next video. Best of luck.